Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Teddy Rothstein, and I'm honored to be here, and thank you for being here. Feel free to take photos and make videos. Now, would you please put your cell phones in silent mode? Write your questions on a piece of paper and add your name and email. You can have a free copy of this presentation on request. I love Philadelphia. I lived here for 10 years when I went to Temple University School of Dentistry and the University of Pennsylvania. I now live in Portland, Oregon and recently opened an office in Salem, the capital of Oregon, 50 miles south. I commute to Brooklyn, New York, 3,000 miles every two months to provide OJW there as well. Here is all my contact information. Take a photo just in case you develop a passion for the subject and want to reach me. In this photo of me, I'm practicing the table clinic I gave a month ago on OJW weight control. I have been providing OJW weight control as a subspecialty of my orthodontic practice in Brooklyn, New York for the past 20 years and still do. When I moved to Portland in 2016, I decided to focus and limit my practice to providing OJW weight control. Consequently, I raised the question to the Oregon Board of Dentistry whether providing my weight control service, as I described it to them, conformed to the Oregon Code of Dentistry. On June 23, 2017, they affirmed that providing weight control services to patients did not violate any of the rules or regulations of the code. The board went on to clarify that it does not function to approve the use of any one specific weight control treatment modality over another. Here is orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control. I'm the developer of the OJW device and the protocol to provide it. Obesity is legion and epidemic and recognized as a precursor to a host of serious illnesses and other comorbidities which attend it, as I will show you later, many of which have oral manifestations and a host of other serious consequences. OJW became a reality when patients noticed that they lost weight when oral surgeons wired their teeth together to heal fractured jaws. Here are my contributions. Interlacing the teeth around brackets with the jaw in its normal rest position, a serious informed consent, criteria for selecting patients who fit, and avoiding those who are not a good fit. Finally, a research survey to assess safety and effectiveness. OJW is a fixed intraoral appliance composed of orthodontic brackets bonded to the canines and premolars, preventing the ingestion of solid food with wires that limit the jaw opening to a maximum of four millimeters. Weight loss ensues when the patient adheres to a low calorie liquid diet, typically between 900 and 1200 calories per day, and can be combined with fasting as recommended by Dr. Jason Fong in his well-received, highly popular book, The Obesity Code. You can learn more on YouTube about him and his theories of fasting. OJW is highly suitable for patients with CED, compulsive emotional eating disorder, to regain control of excessive feeding habits. It allows normal speech, and is harmless to the teeth, gums, and jaw joints while preventing the ingestion of solid foods, the ones we call comfort or junk food. OJW is a safe alternative to medications and surgery. The OJW provider must select patients with care, obtain their informed consent, wire them, as you will see later, into Rothstein's position of mandibular weightlessness.
then teach them how to rewire themselves only if they come from out of state and rewire them every five weeks after being unwired for five days. In brief, the protocol is simple. A low calorie liquid diet, 900 to 1200 calories per day, while being wired for five weeks and then unwired for five days. In dentistry, it is used to treat the cause of OSA sleep apnea, whose most frequent etiology is obesity. Until OJW, the dentist could only treat the symptoms, snoring. OJW can be used in conjunction with a CPAP machine. OJW is approved. It is not forbidden in any state. The dentist is not practicing medicine. It is a safe and effective alternative to weight control by medications and surgery. The position of the jaw is normal or physiologic. It allows normal speech and may be helpful in some cases of TMJ, jaw joint dysfunction. It is simple and inexpensive to fit a patient. The dentist must coordinate with other members of a health care team who provide weight control services, including the physician who diagnoses obesity, the patient's dentist who may request removal of the wiring from time to time, the dietitian who helps manage the low calorie liquid diet, and the psychotherapist who helps the patient understand their compulsive eating habits and treats the depression often accompanying the overweight issue. Most dentists are reluctant to provide the service because they're too timid to broach the subject of obesity and incorrectly believe they are practicing medicine. Over the past 20 years, this service has grown ever stronger. Even now, 85% of the public accepts dentists as weight control providers. Search Google Images for OJW weight control and you will be amazed. By providing this service to more than 250 people, creating a Facebook page for patients, a LinkedIn page for dental and medical professionals, a devoted website, and by urging the governing body of orthodontists that weight control is part of our services, I have made it a reality. There is no effective argument to counter the rationale that it is a safe and effective conservative alternative to weight control utilizing surgery and or medications. Psychologically, patients who perceive they are being cared for by a team of professionals working in concert will be inspired to achieve their weight goals and maintain them. The dentist who provides OJW weight control must always keep in mind that he, she, is solely responsible for maintaining the health of the teeth, gums, and jaw joints when placing an OJW appliance. The weight loss protocol may well include oversight by a dentition and a psychotherapist when warranted. In OJW, the wiring limits the vertical opening to about four millimeters and speech is virtually unimpaired. In IMF, intermaxillary fixation, what oral surgeons do, the teeth are locked together and speech is almost unintelligible. So let's see how fitting the appliance is done. Step one, bond the brackets, 12 in all. That takes 15 minutes. Step two, wire both sides. That takes 15 minutes. Step three, 
teach the patient how to remove and rewire themselves if they live far from the office. That takes 30 to 45 minutes. Voila, and that's it. Hello, I'm Dr. Ted Rothstein, Brooklyn Heights orthodontist and the inventor of orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control. Today, I'm going to demonstrate orthodontic jaw wiring in real time. When the OJW is done correctly, the jaws can move between 2 and 4 millimeters vertically and laterally. This is draw between the teeth. Take your wire and wrap it around number one. Then bring it around and under number two, over number three, and out to number six. Then take the top half of the wire, wrap it around number four, over five, and meet the strand at number six. Do a little twist with your finger. Take the twisting instrument, grab the two ends, wrap them four or five times, trim the tail, and tuck the tail out of harm's way. Remove the straw. Voila, orthodontic jaw wiring. My fellow professionals, thank you for your time. Now, I want you to say mama and note that your lips end up slightly touching. Note where your teeth are. They're about four millimeters apart. This is the wired position. The lower jaw is being held in position by the tonus of the masseter muscle. This is the position you are in normally a 23 hours each day. Try speaking and note it is really quite clear. Jaw wiring forces you to focus on the goal you chose it for, regaining control of compulsive eating, all the reasons you consciously or unconsciously used to permit you to eat those comfort junk foods are banished. You probably recognize many of the reasons because you do them. I know for sure that I do. You're bored and you can't find anything better to do. Ooh, it tastes good and you can't stop yourself from eating it even though your belly is full. You're alone and it's a chance to sneak a snack. Something happened in the past and this is the only way you know to deal with the problem. It's a reward for successfully achieving a goal. You're stressed and feeding your stress instead of your actual hunger. Now, this slide is amusing but it is here not just to amuse you, but to remind you how subtle and complex mindless eating can be and allows me to point out that OJW is a physical and mental reminder that you have chosen to distance yourself with a metaphorical gate that keeps out foods that are bad for you in excess. Admittedly, eliminating solid foods for some compulsive emotionals is like a drug addict stopping cold turkey, but that is exactly the reason they chose OJW. They're dedicated and passionate, they're out of control, and they know it. They are depressed, they need to act. Look, look at item three. Because it's there, it's too hard to give it away, get rid of it, or walk away from it. This is one that I recently experienced. It was squares of salty, sweet, chocolate-coated caramel. 
an obscenely large jar of them. I was sneaking one every day and burdened with guilt. Solution? I asked my wife to hide them, and she did. OJW is a not-so-subtle way to remind them that those lame excuses for eating I noted above are the voices of anxiety and depression and not hunger that are moving them to eat when they are not really hungry. Like every weight loss control method, OJW is fallible. After all, they can remove the wiring with a snip of the wire cutter I provide them. That is why some patients need the help of counselors to help them understand the complexities underlying the cause of their eating compulsions or the excuses they construct that pave the way to the next forage in the refrigerator or pantry. In brief, OJW is a constant reminder of your passionate desire to achieve the weight loss goal you chose at the start. You see it in the mirror every morning and night, literally and figuratively, it's in your face all the time. Indeed, it's in your mouth. Take a look at the picture of the enemy. Donuts, double hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, french fries, pizza shakes. It's no surprise how easy it is to become addicted to such foods. They are rich in calories from the fats, carbohydrates, and sugars they contain. Have you ever noticed how tasteless those low-fat so-called light foods are? That is why these foods are called comfort food. They are also called junk food. OJW prevents you from eating them. That is, unless you first liquefy them in a blender. Now, who's going to do that? The Japanese call it junk food. Only 3% of Japanese have a body mass index BMI over 30, the international standard for obesity, whereas 30% of Americans do. A total of 65% of Americans have a BMI over 25, making them overweight, but only 25% of the Japanese. It's because they eat less and exercise more. Of the eight harmful effects noted here on the slide, including depression, high bad cholesterol, higher risk of stroke and heart attack, and liver dysfunction, you might guess is increased tooth decay. I'm sure you are aware of the high cost of dental care. Weight control makes good sense. Here's the long list of the consequences of prolonged, injudicious, compulsive eating habits. Some are very familiar, others not so. Take a photo of this slide and the next as well. I take a special interest in the sleep apnea. The knee and hip joint dysfunction was a not so obvious surprise finding for me, but it makes perfect sense. Look at one to four, type two diabetes, afflicts one in three Americans, hypertension leads to a shorter life, depression is very common, sleep apnea, which is snoring, stroke, knee and hip joint dysfunction. Please proceed to read a few more on your own. Here are the criteria I use when selecting patients. First of all, they have to be dedicated to and passionate about achieving and maintaining a weight goal. Their BMI is between 28 and 38. They failed at previous methods of weight control. They want to jumpstart an attainable weight loss goal, and they consider weight loss medications out of the question and weight reduction surgery way too risky. In addition, I use three forms 
an informed consent, a medical dental history form, and a self-assessment profile form to help patients decide if OJW is a good choice for them. Here are some guidelines I use when advising would-be OJW patients that this method may not suit them. The list includes two more slides, so I will read only a few of them to you. B. Persons who speak abundantly for business or other reasons whose speech might be rendered less than perfectly clear because of being wired. C. Persons whose sex life would be rendered intolerable if intimate oral functions were impaired, even a little bit. E. Those with psychological or emotional disorders who might feel powerless or panicky with their mouths wired. F. Those whose work functions might be impaired, such as an actor, a singer, waiter, or teacher. I'll give you some time to read a few more on your own. N, O, and P are very important. N, persons who have or are suspected of having anorexia or bulimia to begin with. O, persons with frank, unresolved, periodontal, that's gum tooth socket problems. And P, persons who drink alcoholic beverages, they are uh, certainly a, a problem. Uh, those who drink excessively might throw up and take vomitus back into their airway. They're unsuitable, as well as persons who have a BMI greater than 40, except when specifically referred by a bariatric surgeon who wants them to demonstrate that, that they are capable of losing weight to begin with. Take a photo of this slide. For those of you interested in learning OJW, or who have associates, friends, or colleagues, please contact me. The course information is detailed in the LinkedIn articles noted below the photos. I have two free flash drives with the course information and the PowerPoint presentation. Pass your names forward if you are interested in having one of them. Most people on liquid diets lose weight. Oral surgeons prove that. OJW empowers a liquid diet and heightens resolve. You see it, you feel it. It prevents you from eating the comfort, high caloric, minimally nutritious junk food. Ultimately, nothing succeeds like success. You are inspired by your own success and continue exerting the same controls without needing OJW to maintain the new way of caloric control. You wean back to a solid food diet and the OJW is removed. In addition, compulsive emotional eaters regain control of their sense of spiraling out of control once they begin a liquid diet. They feel their anxiety hunger pains begin to diminish and see they are losing weight. Their self-esteem and self-image begin to return, and they become even more determined to succeed. Consequently, as they say, nothing succeeds like success. That's how OJW works. It's comforting for the patient to feel that their physician, dentist, dietitian, and therapist are on the same page, united by their combined skills to assist them achieve and maintain the goal weight they stated in the informed consent at the start of OJW. Surrounded by caring authority figures, they are more likely to attain their goal weight and maintain it. 
Take note here of the forms patients must provide. One, the medical dental history form. Two, the informed consent. Three, the self-assessment image form. Note especially the physician's release. The release permits the dentist to fit the patient with an appliance. Inherent in it is a diagnosis of obesity and explicit permission to begin a long-term, low-calorie liquid diet. I tailor the medical dental history form specifically for OJW patients. Hence, do you know what a panic attack is? It's there because the actual experience of having wires for the first time is akin to being set down in a totally unfamiliar place, like Times Square in New York City on New Year's Eve for the first time. One might very well have a panic attack. Asking them this question adheres to advice that forewarned is forearmed. I pay much attention to would-be patients' responses. What if they have teeth that are missing that are used in the OJW wiring process? What if they have removable devices? That would make them immediately ineligible for OJW. Here is an actual informed consent. It tells me that Carla has chosen OJW and is informed regarding its potential risks and benefits. It begins with basic questions. What is your age, height, weight, and goal weight? Carla, 41, 5'5", 185, goal 130. She wants to lose 50 pounds. She is fiercely dedicated, motivated, and passionate. We're going to meet her just 11 slides further away. Note that Carla is willing to dedicate six months passionately. She will lose about 25 pounds every three months or 50 pounds in six. That is her goal. Carla completed all her forms immaculately. Such attention is a good indication of her cooperation. Indeed, my experience is that persons who complete forms precisely and neatly and timely are the ones who will be dedicated and passionate. They are likely to follow the OJW protocol and succeed. This informed consent content makes the patient understand that using elastics in place of wire may well cause her teeth to shift unfavorably and that she may need a different dentist to remove the OJW brackets at additional cost to her if she lives far from the office. In content number three, she affirms she has read and understands who is a poor candidate for OJW. Moreover, she affirms that she is a good candidate and signs off on that declaration. I am assured she understands the risks and benefits of my weight loss service. The third form is the patient's self-assessment profile containing many of these self-vision, self-awareness statements. Look at the third down. You realize a note from your physician indicating you may begin a liquid diet is required. And she X's yes. Look at the last one. Nobody seems to understand the burden or seriousness of the problem of eating compulsively. She marks that X as well. Persons who inquire about the OJW weight control ask many important questions or frequently ask questions, FAQs. At my dedicated website, ojw4weightcontrol.com, you can see all of them. But right here, 
are the four most important of them and the answers. I won't keep you in suspense. Here are the questions and answers. Is speech normal? Yes. Is the jaw position likely to cause pain or discomfort? No. Will I lose weight? Yes. Is it safe? Yes. Finally, all patients are provided with a significant troubleshooting manual providing guidance to handle every problem that might occur, the most common of which is related to brackets becoming detached. Here are are the first five of 10 facts that make OJW a logical option, one that will really help them achieve their weight loss goal, maintain it, and not cause them harm. Let's spell out a few. It has no bad reviews. It's safe and predictable. The jaw is positioned naturally. There's no record of harm. More than 35,000 people each year have their jaws wired by oral surgeons due to pathology or fracture. There is no record of harm coming to any as a result of jaw wiring. And the teeth never shift and speech is clear. Lastly, the teeth, gums, and jaw joints remain healthy. Meet Carla, who I mentioned previously. She is motivated and dedicated and passionate about losing those 50 pounds to get to her goal weight. Here to refresh your memory are her statistics. She is age 41, height 5 foot 5 inches, weighs 185 pounds, and wants to be 130 pounds. It was June 11th, 2017, and she came from Abilene, Texas. She is a respiratory therapist. Her exam and x-ray showed her dental health was immaculate, just like the forms she completed. Hi, I'm Carla, and I'm gonna get my OJW done by Dr. Ted. And this is a little trial before this procedure to see how I speak. So that's it, see you later. Here's I love Carla. my OJW. Just after being fitted and wired I recommend in it. the typical OJW position of rest. When I called her three days later, she had to assure me she was in wiring. She is not a unique example. She is typical of all OJW wired patients. I love my OJW. I recommend it. I have shown how a weight control service is integrated into the dentist's office under a protocol that requires being part of the healthcare team and conforms to every state's code of dentistry. Dentists can now choose to treat the symptoms of sleep apnea or treat its cause, in most cases obesity, and in many cases that results from CED, Compulsive Emotional Eating Disorder. The healthcare team consists of the patient's physician, dentist, dietitian, and when warranted, psychotherapeutic counseling. The surgeon may opt to begin conservatively by referring some of his patients to begin weight control by a less invasive method. Finally, I have shown that the general public accepts and welcomes dentists as providers of weight control services. My extensive research study questionnaire in 2009 answered these basic questions related to safety, effectiveness, and public acceptance. Given that vomiting 
could lead to the taking of vomitus back into your airway, leading to effects ranging from choking and possibly to death. Please state your positions from the list below. The informed consent I filled out told me all I needed to know. I was warned of that, so I carried my wire clippers with me at all times. It's possible, but highly unlikely. Question 63. Why did you choose the OJ method to begin with? My being overweight was causing me to be depressed. I felt that this approach might help me bring my compulsive overeating under control. I realized that my excessive weight could have serious health-related consequences. I was finally able to locate a dental professional who would provide the service. Question 21. My choice below indicates how I feel about OJW for the control of weight in compulsive overeating. 70% said OJW is both safe and effective. Question 66. Do you believe it is the right and responsibility for dental professionals to provide this service to compulsive overeaters? Response, 85% said yes. Please take a picture of my contact and course information. Have a great day. Thank you for attending my presentation. Have a really great day.